Welcome back to my little side series from my Persona 3 Reload live stream. It's been a bit since I finished my playthrough. If you haven't watched the final episode, I encourage you to check it out as I've uh, uh, done a detailed review of the game as the credits rolled. And some of you might be wondering, oh, will I come back to this? And uh, yeah, you betcha. So let's start off with the don't know slash don't remember category slash the it, it would be unfair to rate them. Uh, we had f we had published this list before we even got Koromaru, so let's uh, start with Koromaru. Uh, let's start with some people I forgot. So, uh, yeah, Hirage, that's his name. He's like the art dude and he like wants to be a doctor or something. You know, he was very easy to talk to, but he's a very, very, uh, forgettable character overall. Uh, I did have fun doing his social link, though. It all, it seems very wild and crazy, so he will at the very least be put at the end of B tier. I think under Pharos. Uh, I'll have to reorder some of these. Obviously, some characters had a much more expansive arc than, uh, others, let's say. Like, some I didn't even touch, uh... Chi oh, I can't remember her name. Big Forehead Girl. I didn't touch her since the last tier list. Same with Maiko. Same with um, Kenji. I, I, I don't have their names pulled up. I'm pulling them out of my head. So let's uh, continue on. I think another party member I think we should rate uh, Ken. Ken's definitely a B tier character. I don't really have an opinion on him, but... He's like Fuka tier. Like, if I had, could have a cooler party member, I would take them, but they are definitely uh, very useful in what they do, right? Combat wise, and as a character. Huh, the music's a bit low. I might turn it up a bit. Sorry. I try to make these, like, a bit uh, professional. But, uh, I seem to fail to do that every time. I know I can add the music in post, but I want to jam out too, guys. Can you really blame me? It's Persona music. Another party member, Koromaru. I mentioned Koromaru. Kor I mean, Koromaru's the goat. He's no dog. That's for sure. He. I'm going to put him at the top of S tier because I need to reorganize this anyways. Koromaru is just the goat. He hit every single enemy, like, he, he I, honestly, he, he was, like, the whole, whole reason how we got through Tartarus. He's so strong. So incredibly strong, and he's so fast, too. It's ridiculous. Like, I know I could have made my personas fast as well, but I didn't even get any good personas until the last episode, so... Who knows? Another party member, a short-lived one. In fact, I never even used him, uh, Shinjiro. Shinjiro. I, like I said, names are not my friend. Uh, I, I feel like every interaction with him was so awkward. I'll be honest, he's not, I, like, I don't know actually how much people like him. I know people who like, uh, when you're playing um, as Femme C, I know a lot of people like to go the Shinjiru dating route. But I don't know, he was not really a character I vibed with. It felt like every interaction I had with him was super awkward. He was just a very problematic character all the way up until the end. And when, uh, I, I don't know, should I put like a, a spoiler warning? I feel like you should watch my series if you want my opinion of the um, of the characters. But I, I won't give any major spoilers. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. But Shinjiro's—I I mean, how how am I supposed to not spoil 
Shinjiru's whole, like, point. He's, like, the reason why, you know, Akihiko got, like, a good character arc. Yeah, I don't really know how to tackle this. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say stuff if I spoil it, sorry. I recommend watching my series or playing the game yourself. It's a good game, 9 out of 10. Okay, uh, who else do we remember here? Oh god, I can't remember this guy's name now. Okay, he goes into top of B tier. He's a cool character, but I just didn't like him. I liked hanging out with him. He always gave me, uh, like, uh, free stats. So he was cool. Okay, Tanaka. Let's talk about Tanaka for a second. He was a character, a social link. I liked him on the TV, honestly. But, and he took like 30,000 money away from me. He's kind of a scam artist, but that's kind of cool being friends with a scam artist. So I'm going to put him in A tier. He's interesting. Let's talk about uh, Hayase. That's his name, right? Hayase. Um, he was so good. I, I would put him in S tier. But, like, I don't really like how his story wrapped up. So, actually, I'm gonna put him in, like, the top of B tier. Like, because he's just a social link, right? He's not a party member. I have to judge him just based on the story. And how I interacted with him. Um... And our, our interactions kind of kind of fell flat, in my opinion. Well, let's talk about these two guys. I on I remember seeing this guy. I can't remember who he is. I, I don't have an opinion on him. And we didn't even find this guy. He's like the Moon Arcana. We didn't find him once. We didn't even initiate our our social link with him, regardless of whether we wanted to. So. I feel like it's unfair to rate them, so we'll keep them as a. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll put this as can't rate. You know, I if I'm just rating it off their design, this guy goes like bottom of C tier, and this guy goes like uh, middle B, right? But I'm not gonna do that because I think judging characters just based on their appearance when this game is so um, heavy on the connections that you form. With these social links specifically, I feel like it's unfair to rate them. Okay, let's start climbing up the ladder to Ash Soot tier. Unfortunately, Yukari, in her 10 years of being in my mental Ash Soot tier, uh, sits very uh, highly on this uh, this throne. She's not getting uh, out of here, I'll be honest. Like, uh, during my live stream, somebody asked me... You know, is there a chance that I, a Yukari, could move up between the the original placement and me finishing the game? I said, unfortunately, not. You know, Yukari's been my least favorite Persona Three character for ten years, so it's. Yeah. <laughs> She'd have to work her butt off to even get to C tier. Let's just say that. With that being said, moving on to C tier. Uh, we might not have too many changes, but I feel like it's appropriate to move Maya up a tier. Since uh, I, I do like, at the very, very end, we do find out Maya's true identity. And with that being said, I think she'll actually, uh, she'll move to, like, Hayase tier. I didn't like Maya, but Maya had, like, a plot twist at the end that was pretty interesting. What's this guy's name? Jin? J it's a Jin? Ah, oh, gosh, I'm gonna look so stupid. Same, same, like, with, uh, last, the last time I did this tier list, I think I kept calling Koromaru Konomaru. But honestly, let's be honest, I mean Jin. Let's call him Jin. I, it starts with a J, it doesn't have a lot of letters. Let's call him Jin. Maybe I've been 
watching too much Tekken 8 gameplay. But, um, I think Jin is not really moving anywhere. Uh, he didn't have that cool of a persona design either. So, yeah. He doesn't really have any redeeming quality, so he's gonna sit there in C tier. I didn't touch these guys, so it's they're not moving, right? And the class president guy, he, um, he's like the gatekeeper to B tier, like, you know, he he can't join B tier. I'll be honest. He's he's um. I feel like he, maybe he's an underrated character. I'd be down to move him to B tier and say like, you know, I understand most people don't like him, but I don't dislike him like how everyone else dislikes him. I, I dislike him, it's true. But I don't dislike him as much as everyone else does. And, you know, maybe I'm over-exaggerating, maybe he's not like a hated character, but I've never seen people talk about this guy as someone they like. Which segues us perfectly into the B tier, am I right? We put Hayase here, we put Maya up here, we put uh, this guy up here. I can't remember his name at all. At all. Wiped from my memory. Wiped from my memory. Uh, Chidori, I think, deserves to move up. I think, uh, I think Junpei... And Chidori had such a good character arc. And you know, you might be like, oh, you, but you skipped, you skipped most of the dialogue. What, what, what do you even care about their character arc? It's like, I skipped the dialogue that didn't pertain to me understanding the story. It's like, I, you know, I, I understood the, the connection that they had and the, the sacrifices that were made, the time spent. It's like, I, you know, I, I totally understand the dynamic. Regardless of what pieces of dialogue I read and which ones I didn't. I, th I think I'm rambling now. Um, but yeah, Chidori had a really cool character arc, like genuinely. She was a character that uh, I think changed the most over... You know, you know maybe it's Igis, maybe it's Igis. But she was one of the characters that changed the most over the course of the entire game so I, I really like how she changed and her designs pretty good and her persona is all right and the little persona fusion Junpei has it's okay it didn't make me use Junpei on my team but um moving on to uh, we put Tanaka here I think the teacher's fine there I think I overrated her last time but I think she's good there now. I would place her in B tier, or sorry, A tier, if she wasn't there before. But she is there. I think I overrated her last time, but that's fine. Uh, Miyamoto. Um, he's actually gonna... I didn't, I did not finish rating the people in B tier, did I? Okay, let me quickly talk. Class president, he's like the gatekeeper of B tier. Hiraga... His, uh, uh, social link interactions were always so chaotic. Pharos, we didn't spend that much time with him, and the dialogue options were, to be quite frank, very boring. Um, so I'm actually gonna move him down to C tier. I did not have a lot of fun talking with him. Uh, Fuka... I think I met- I, I talked about her with Ken. It's like, you know, they are characters, and they're a part of the Seas. They're a part of, uh, oh, the Nyx elimination team as well. Um, but Ken, honestly, he's just, a uh, a good healer. It, he could have been... I like any of these other characters with the same moves and persona, I, I would still use them, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't think 
I don't think Ken was particularly... Like, he didn't have as much weight to his character as, say, someone like the main character or Akihiko does. Like, they actually have weight to who they are and what they do. But he doesn't. He's just a kid, right? I mean, what's a kid supposed to do? Now that I'm thinking about it, is this... This is not the lady who worked at the artifact shop. I have no clue. No clue who this is. Zero idea. Uh, let's talk about Takaya. Uh, dude, I totally forgot his name until I I moused over him. It, like, uh, he, sent, he sent his name to me. Yeah, Takaya's cool. I'm actually gonna upgrade him to, like, above Mitsuru. I think he's... His interactions were so, like... He asked such profound questions, but they weren't they weren't really profound. They were very easy to answer actually. Because we're the good guys and he's the bad guy, right? It's like um so the it was a, quite an easy dynamic to deal with him interaction-wise, but because he was so wrong in his actions, Seeing him fight for those wrong choices was very fun to beat him, uh, for the most part. When him and, like, I, I guess you can say the same thing about Jin, but m to a much lesser extent. It was very fun to beat Takaya. Not very fun to beat this guy. I didn't really care what this guy had to say. Okay, and I think that, uh, B tier, um, this guy... Went off the wazoo. He he made Igus try and kill us. Ooh, how terrifying! But I mean, Igus is the goat after all. So uh, he his plans were thwarted, thwarted absolutely. So I think he's fine in the B tier. I think he had a very normal character arc. Okay, now let's go to the A tier. I'm sorry if I, uh, um, Chidori or somebody here totally lost me to Naka, or I don't even remember. Whatever. Okay, A tier. Let's start with Tanaka. Uh, I placed him there, I already explained him. Uh, the teacher. I already explained her. Miyamoto. Okay, Miyamoto's moving down a tier, that's for sure. He's below high SA. He's just so boring. Like, I compared him to, like, the level 1, like, you know, Rattata or Pidgey, the, like, first Pokemon you encounter at the start of your Pokemon game. And, you know, sometimes those Pokemon evolve into something really cool, some large Pokemon that you want to keep until the end, but no, he just, uh... He had, like, a minimal problem the entire time. His, like, knee... He got a knee injury and he needed to let it rest. And he never really amounted to anything, I'll be completely honest. He was not a good friend, either. Um, like, he didn't really do anything for me. And that's, you know, that's an important part about the social links. I have to gain something out of them. And we'll definitely, when we get to the S tier, I'll talk about what I gained from those particular characters. Liz, I'm, I'm okay with leaving Liz in the A tier. I, I know during the series, I had a lot of fun talking to Liz and doing her requests. But I think her design really holds her back from me being able to enjoy the quality time I spent with her. I just don't like the yellow eyes and the hat and the some of the quirks in her dialogue. We got some banger music playing, by the way. The whole Velvet Room shtick I'm not really into. So, as cool as our interactions were, I feel like Elizabeth's character design uh, limits those compared to some of the other characters who I believe their 
um, character design actually enhances the unique interactions I have with them. Let's talk about the main character. I spoke to lengths about how much I like this main character. And I think I'm actually going to increase my rating to the top of A tier because of how cool the ending sequence was. It's like, you know, I didn't say anything, but like, I said so much in in the ending sequences and then the, when people are, when they're calling out to me, or more, uh, I want to talk about two things. When uh, I'm in the Velvet Room and then Igor's like, oh, look, all these people, they're, they're calling, they're, they're the bonds, the unbreakable bonds you've made with them. They're calling out to you and, uh... It allowed me to get the ultimate power, the power of the universe. And then, you know, after I did my thing, and I called out to my my group, my friends. You know, that was very cool. That was, had so much momentous weight on the entire story. Even though I don't have that much of a personality. I really felt like my character was very attached to the story that he was a part of and almost as if um I want to compare it to if you go bowling if you go bowling and you take something light like let's say a six pound bowling ball it's not gonna have that much weight to it so you're gonna have to throw it really hard to get like a a, a good roll to knock down the pins, right? Alternatively, you can have a really heavy bowling ball and roll it very slowly and use the weight of just the bowling ball in hopes to knock over the pins. And I, I, I'll explain my metaphor in a second, though I think some of you can understand it already. But if you have that perfect blend, and you'll see this very, very often in professional bowling, the perfect blend of a, a ball that is just the right size that you are able to control with uh, just the right amount of power, you're you're going to get a very consistent, a very uh, liquid almost. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. I, I was going to say a very liquid certainty. That's like the, the words coming to my mind. But I know those words don't mean anything. But if I say them with such confidence as I am right now, the liquid certainty, then I think... Uh, okay, well, anyways, th that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, you can have a good character and a bad story, and you can have, like, you know, it works out. Or maybe you can have a bad main character, like the main character really doesn't do anything but, like, a, a good story. It's like, okay, you can enjoy that, but having that good blend of a character that uh, matches the weight of the story, I think, really is what creates the, the perfect vibe that this game has. Um, okay, on to Mitsuru. Honestly, Mitsuru was more fun to hang out with than she was to, like, have in my party. She could have not been a party member. I would have enjoyed her all the same. I feel like her being a party member just amounted to her feeling kind of useless. You know, I get that some of you might have ran Mitsuru in your party and you're like, oh, I'm clicking off this video. I'm Mitsuru carried me through floors 50 to 75. It's like, yeah, good for you, but... I didn't really like her ha having her in my party. I felt like she was... She, her animations always felt weird. Her persona was kind of whatever. Her attack style. It's just... I did not like her in combat, but out of combat, she's a great character. And that's why she's an A tier. Uh, moving on to Akihiko. I just love Akihiko's design. I love, like, boxer characters in general. 
I think like boxing is just such a cool aesthetic to put on a, a relatively normal character. I personally don't know anybody who's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to permanently work out and train and box and I'm, I'm going to take fights that I know I can win because I'm confident in my ability. It's like he's got such a cool aura, such a cool personality. And I feel like that's reflective in not only his, uh, uh, the times I hang out with him, but also in combat. Unfortunately, Akihiko was not, uh, good enough to make it to my final team, but for the time I guess was unable to join my party, Akihiko was the best replacement I could have asked for. Um, with that being said, I think he's still rated below Chidori and Junpei, just because... I mean, this is such a dynamic duo that it's like a, it, it's like it could be a story all on its own. It was a very, very powerful story. Okay, now let's move on to the S tier. I do want to first move Yuko down to the A tier. As, uh, similar to Miyamoto, who moved down since last episode, it kind of just got boring. I couldn't really care less about what she was saying. Her story wrapped up very confusingly. It's like, uh, you know, maybe I was skipping too much dialogue when it comes to her because, uh, you know, some people require you to... Pay attention to more detail than others. That could be true. But I, um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't really enjoy Yuko that much. The hanging out with the kids took way too long. Um, she didn't like the gift I gave her. She's the only character in this game I gave a gift to, and she didn't like it. Um... And now, let's move on to the rest of S tier. So, I am actually going to... Uh, and you might not believe this, but I'm moving... Beeb... and uh, Mutatsu... into the favorites category. And then, uh... we'll have an Igus tier. Uh, and it can be yellow for I guess. And we'll make this uh, blue. There we go. We have an I guess tier. Let's talk about let's talk about the S tier. I think what what separates like S tier and favorites. Where I think A tier characters have faults, but very very minor faults. I think S-tier characters are flawless. However, I don't think uh, their flawlessness really adds enough to my experience for me to put them in a, in a favorites category. So, uh, the old people, the Hierophant, and I'm rating both of them in this case, I really liked their story. I really, really like their story. However, at the end, when you talk to them when you finish the game, or uh, when they call out to you, it's like, uh, he says like, uh, Oh, why am I thinking of that boy right now? I would have liked him to say something different. I'll be, like, that one line, I think, separates him from going from S tier to favorites tier. And Koromaru, I'm not a dog person, I'll be honest, so his design, as much as I said he's flaw, uh, like the S tier characters are flawless, I, I just have it, uh, I have a hard time of saying like, oh, you know, the dog in the game is my favorite character, you know, it, that's not true, I, it's like, unfortunately. 
Okay, moving on to the new favorites tier. Uh, I guess was so alone in this tier, and now she's ascended, leaving behind two spots in the form of Beeb and Mutatsu. Beeb, I was thinking originally to put like I, 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 this. When I finish the series, I'm like, okay, I know, I know, Beeb's moving up. I know, I know Beeb's moving up to the favorites here. He's such a fun written character. Like, genuinely, I had so much fun. Just, uh, being like, oh, what's Beeb gonna say? What What's Beeb gonna say? I can't wait. I can't wait. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna say? I, like, every everything was a twist and a turn and a very fun character. This music is, uh, hold on, I, I need a, give me a... Give me a good one. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> That's much better. So originally, I had, uh, this was, this was gonna be my, my list. Originally. But. Um. Mutatsu, I think, also really shined through. Because in the end, he could not stop being himself. However, it's who he was in the end that still brought him the happiness that he wanted to achieve. And it just goes to show that as long as you... Uh, act, act in your own. If you, if you keep, hmm, how do I want to word this? I think, I think how I want to word this is acting in your own interest can be beneficial to you, even if you don't change the way you actually behave. That, that did not make sense. That, nope. I've missed the mark again. But, uh, Mutatsu is just such a funny character. Same with B. But both these guys, they, I think, had what I value most in a, we'll just say, um, a visual novel setting. Because they aren't characters I'm necessarily um, maxing out to gain some stats or uh, gain anything from them. Not not like uh, in-game wise, but I've gained a lot from them out of game. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, now moving on to Igus. Okay, I wanna I wanna say this before I forget. Igus is in my top between my top fifty and my top twenty characters in that like list between fifty and twenty characters of all time, like fictional characters, not just Maga Ten characters or Shin Megami Tensei characters or Persona characters, all like fiction. You know, what does Igus have? A wonderful story. What what else does Igus have that I enjoy? A great personality. Great writing. Great design. What do I think could be expanded upon? Um, the answer to that I do not have. Not yet. But I, I, uh, I will be excited. Hopefully we see more of Igus in the future. But I think I've uh, spoken to lengths enough already. I feel like uh, this video might have a bit poorer quality than the last one. But um, that's that's what happens when uh, you give a. Hold on, there's a word I wanted to say in this video. I uh, hold on, one moment, lads, one moment. A blatherskite. That's what happens when you give a blatherskite like me a tier list. I will not stop talking about uh, 
the the my opinion. But even though I said I wouldn't stop talking, it is now the end of the video. So if you liked this video, please leave a like. If you dislike this video, please leave a dislike. If you like my tier list videos, please comment what you would like to see me do a tier list of next time, if I'm able to. I think uh, I do want to do a League of Legends tier list. Uh, I'm totally going to run out of breath doing that one. And uh, uh, be sure to uh, follow me on Twitter, I guess. I don't know what else to say at the end of the video. Okay, GG's. This has probably been the last Persona video until the answer comes out or some new content, some new DLC comes out for Persona 3. And, uh, I was waiting for this song to come on, so I'll do my outro again. Okay, uh, so overall, uh, if you liked me talking about Persona, I have 65 hours of content uploaded on my channel about me playing the game and talking about it, so... If you thought a 35 minutes, what are we at, 36 minutes was too short, please check out my Let's Play. I am considering doing a, like an abridged version where I take all the best moments and put it all in like one, two, three hour video. But that sounds like a lot of work for somebody like me, somebody without a lot of uh, content expertise, but... We'll see. If that's something you want to see, please leave it down in the comments and I might get to work on it and maybe we'll see that in March. Um, okay, that's the video. Leave a like. I can't stop doing the same outro, I'm sorry. GG.